the topic at hand is designing and building in virtual space. Using my hands in that space feels so much more intuitive than any other type of interface I have. <laughs> I'm having it. This week's build is a virtual design maquette of the Nilo Rodas Jedi speeder bike. It all begins with this figure who will stick around as a constant reminder of scale and this rather unremarkable cold digital cube. Here's a handy guide to the project. Introduction is complete. A little history of this build would be helpful. Massing model build, review of forms in headset, reference gathering for hero build, hero build, more headset review, and a 3D print of the final model. Nearly a year ago, I was talking about a design maquette I made of a speeder bike for Nilo Rodas Jamero, way back in 1997. And it turned out that my friend Adam Savage, who has the finest YouTube channel going over at Tested, he happens to have in his collection a drawing by Nilo of a similar speeder bike. And we decided to scratch build a new model from that design. While we were at it, and while I was sanding styrene, I said that the project was making me think about the degree to which the material and tools you're using influence the product. Yeah. And I think it's incumbent on the designer and a builder to fight the tools yes. as, as, yeah. as needed, because you can't let the tool dictate the form. No, you're, um, yeah. And boy, I mean, even this first part I made, I look at it and think, oh, I would have done that differently on yeah. a computer. And I kind of made some of those decisions based on the fact that I'm putting styrene together and that's how styrene works. Right, right, yeah. yeah. So this question about how the model we made may or may not have been different had it been made with different tools, it's stuck in my craw long enough that I'm going to go ahead and tackle the same design project, but this time in virtual space with digital tools. We'll 3D print the result at Adam's shop, and we can see what the two models have to say about tool choices. So here we go with a speeder bike maquette made with digital tools. I will take my own advice and remain mindful to not let these tools have undue influence on the forms I create. That cube that I started work with, I've been adding points. I've been pushing those points around. I will add more cubes. I will add a cylinder now and then. The most important part in this stage of the work is to remember that we are making a massing model. And a massing model is intended to define the silhouette, define the forms, define the scale. And the mistake nearly everyone makes in any medium is to be tempted into working on final forms and details uh, prematurely and detail on top of a poorly proportioned form only hides and masks problems in the overall design. Um, worth pointing out that the artwork I'm working from by Nilo uh, is a collection of sketches. Every one of them is fairly different from the other. Uh, and so in this case, it's all the more important to remain simple, uh, remain open to the general forms uh, until we have a massing model that we believe in uh, and a 3D representation of those sketches that we like.
Change of plans. I am out of time. I have to head to Maine to start making camp year two. So we're going to have to part one this thing and we will wrap it up with a relevant discussion with someone who popped by the studio today. This is hilarious, I love this one. And it actually turns out the build will be really fun. I'm doing double vacuum form over. Physical virtual combo. Yeah. Um, Adam Savage, thanks for coming by. My absolute Hello. pleasure, sir. It <laughs> smells great in here, by the way. I've been hearing that a lot, and it could go the other way. So I'm glad. <laughs> um, the topic at hand is designing and building in virtual space. And for, so for as long as I've been working in physical space and virtual space, I've been interested in bridging the divide between the two. Mm -hmm. You've been uh, bullish on 3D printing more recently. Yeah. But also recently on your channel. Jarvis Cross asks, what do you think is going to be the new rage when it comes to new makers, techniques, and tools in the next few years? Making, and you answered. I think it's, I think it's CAD drawing in VR. Because I've done a bunch of CAD drawing, 2D and 3D. I've forgotten it all, but like I remember what it's like to use that and to use that part of my brain that translates between the 3D in my head to the 2D here to the 3D thing that will exist under different rules. And when I started thinking about that in VR, I thought that could be the thing that collapses the CAD CAM pipeline. When I could scale something infinitely to my own body in a space, where I could open it up and put a fillet in here, and close it back out and now look at it globally. That feels like using my hands in that space feels just the abstract feels so much more intuitive than any other type of interface I've had. What I've done is a first step into that. And as long as it would have been 2016, eight years ago, eight years ago at ILM with a fairly high profile ILM client, I did an asset review with him in headset he made some design choices and decisions that had everything to do with the fact that this little, this little robot was, was standing next to him. And he said, oh, the head needs to be bigger on that. And that wouldn't have happened had we been looking at a little turntable going around and around. Right. So ever since then, I've certainly relied on that workflow for me. I do a fair amount of architectural design for the house, and mm -hmm. for the place I'm working on in Maine. And I approach it a bit like set design in the movies in that I model it. And then I put on a headset and I walk around in it and the stairs get wider and the pitch of this changes. All things that you just wouldn't, you wouldn't see yeah. unless you had it in a headset. And this, and this design maquette that I'm making digitally right now, I'm doing the same thing. I take it into Unreal, I set up a turntable and I stand next to it with the artwork and look at it. Um, and, and reviewing design in that context versus staring at a little screen. It's a whole other, whole other world. Well, you bring up this thing that's really interesting because we're both generalists. We're, we use all sorts of, we use everything we've ever learned for any given project. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and as such, um, as a generalist, we are keen to pay attention to that moment in a project when the totality of the thing we're making is in here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a, it takes a different amount of time with every project. And when you're building stairs for the first time, it happens really late because you never built stairs before and you don't know what is important. And then you meet the guy who makes stairs all day long and stairs are this whole different lattice in his head. But when you're both looking at the same virtual thing, it gives you, the, the virtual space has the potential to give you the ability to visualize that the experienced craftsperson has built over decades. Yeah. In a way that nothing else could give you. Um, so why don't I, in, in the spirit of finish, finishing my half of the sure. project of the year, we'll, we'll turn the camera around from the physical side of the room to the digital virtual side of the okay. room. Um, and I'll show you the state of the model in headset. I love that. Excellent. <clears throat> Old fashioned at this point, headset. Oh, nice. Oh, hello. Oh, there you go. Why, hello. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having trouble figuring out. So, you know that model. I know this model well. Yeah, and it is, it's in uh, the Massey model stage. Just to get the gross proportions. Yep. 
Oh, okay. So the idea would be that there's an internal cone that turns the these lath these back two fins. Yep. Yeah. And that they can go up and down like up wings. And down and adjust their orientation. And, and rotate them. I think you can get away with actually a fairly wingy wing there. You know how like sometimes on older 40s stuff the wings get super fat like a GB racer? Mm-hmm. This front piece needs some more dimensionality that's not just vertical. Mm. A few stages ahead, I'll be pulling a lot of reference for Star Wars construction. Right. Which is so often sheet metal found in a yeah. in a junkyard. You, know, you can't get too sophisticated with compound shapes with Star Wars it's true. a lot of the time. Although when I turned in that team teased that skyhopper to George, he was like, well, you only made it look like a triangle because all we have was plywood. <laughs> That's true. Um, I will say from a functional standpoint, you might want a bumper that extends past where the feet are at the very front to deflect. If you're riding fast, I would imagine. Tree branches. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Man, I, it's, I totally, you're absolutely right about the ways in which you can see things like this that you can't see any other way. I think you do one of those um, you do those uh, quadrophenia mirror arrangements. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Hi everyone, Harry here to talk about the first two days, the second day, but really the first two days of the Trump trial. And the headline is. Jury selections moving pretty quickly. 